Hello, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf again, and toward the end of the summer, just about every year, on Poa Annua Greens, in areas where it gets a little bit warm, we'll start to see some summer patch escape. That's a disease caused by Magnaportha poe, and it attacks the roots. Uh, this is an example of what a sample looks like that has some, uh, some damage caused by summer patch uh, that's breaking through the fungicide applications. And this has been treated, uh, had two applications of heritage of 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet on a 21 day interval. And what we seem to see happen with these uh, situations is that that's just a little bit too long an interval. New leaves are being formed and new roots are being formed. They're being attacked and they, they weren't uh, fully protected. So probably shortening that interval down to about 14 days uh, and using the 0.2 ounce uh, rate is probably a, a better idea to, to avoid this type of thing. So let's take a look and see what's uh, on the plants and show you how the uh, summer patch attacks those roots and causes some escapes here and it's not too easy, uh, not too hard to control. Uh, just a little bit of 33, 36 or, or heritage uh, and even insignia. Uh, if it's hot, uh, we avoid uh, the DMI fungicide. So you're going to stay in those two classes, the thiophanate methyl or the QOI areas. Well, in addition to the Poa annua sample, green sample, we also had a sample of ryegrass from fairways that uh, showed up with some summer patch late in the season. In this case, the fairway was just not treated uh, for control. And we'll show you what uh, summer patch looks like if it's left uncontrolled uh, till later in the season and why a preventative program is needed. Well, it's the end of the summer and uh, we just received a few samples from ryegrass fairways that are looking pretty grim and we've looked at the surface to see if there's any primary pathogens attacking the foliage and there's some secondaries but not primary pathogens that we can would consider to be a problem so in these cases what you immediately should do or consider doing is either take half of the sample or the whole sample uh, spin it upside down and we're going to want to take a look at the roots and the best way to do that is to go ahead and rinse off the soil from the, uh, from the root zone and we do that with a forceful stream of water and you want to really uh, blow the soil off so you can get a good look about the roots, of how the roots appear, and if they're uh, white or if they're uh, darkened or discolored in any way. Well, and you can see from the end of this process, I mean, there's a uh, uh, very few white roots. Actually, we can probably see a couple of locations here where there's probably a few root knot nematodes in the system and there's just a few white roots but most of the roots are pretty well discolored and let's take the we'll pull a plant out and uh, run these under the dissecting microscope and take a look and see what we find this plant is a pretty good illustration of what happens if the summer patch pathogen uh, colonizes the plant earlier in the season and the symptoms don't show up until later when there's some stress involved you can see that the deeper roots here are pretty well damaged and, and they're discolored and we'll take a look at those under the uh, under the compound microscope too. And a lot of this uh, deeper area of the plant that would help with uh, pulling water from deeper in the soil has been damaged. Some of the new roots have been uh, protected and they're white uh, as a result of, a, of an application of azoxystrobin about 30 days prior. So some of these new roots are, are okay and they'll be protected as they develop. But you've lost, uh, at this point, you've lost that access to deep moisture conditions so the surface of the soil needs to be moist uh, for these plants to recover. And if the soil temperatures are high, uh, the roots are just not going to develop, uh, and especially higher at the surface. So it makes it a sort of a catch-22 later in the season when summer patch has done some damage. Let's zoom in just a little bit. We can get a, maybe we'll be able to get a little bit better look at these uh, these damaged areas. See, there's the new roots that don't look too bad, uh, and they're probably still reasonably functional. Uh, but further down, you'll see the roots are uh, completely uh, colonized by the uh, summer patch pathogen, Magnaportha poe. And we'll just take a look at that under the compound scope a little bit also. The typical characters for summer patch are, are these dark ectotrophic hyphae, that little strand of dark uh, fibers running on the outside of the root, and they'll drill down into the cortex and basically rot the cortex off the plant, making it totally uh, non-functional. But you can see this, uh, this small strand of hyphae running down the uh, root, giving an idea of how it, pretty much how the disease starts out attacking the roots. 
Then once the disease has been active for a little while, it'll make growth cessation structures, this uh, brown structure that you're seeing in the center of the image, which is a resting structure of the organism. Uh, so that gives you the characters that we, we typically look at for identification of summer patch and take a look at the associated links with this video for up-to-date management uh, and control recommendations. This disease needs to be controlled preventively because uh, once the damage is done, you have to grow new roots pretty much rather than uh, just simply uh, controlling the disease.